confidence, thy name is not Marvel. Kevin Feige apparently has put out the call to Ryan Reynolds. Tell the folks that it's not what they might hope for. It's not a huge movie that leads into more MCU movies. It's isolated. It's its own thing. It's parody. It's a hard R. Don't bring the kids! Folks, we're here to tell you they're already putting out disclaimers for Deadpool and Wolverine, and we'll tell you why. Hello folks, welcome back to the Pro Channel, the place where we bring common sense to Hollywood yet again, explaining entertainment, keeping you ahead of the culture curve. Joining us, and it's been far too long since the last visit, we have Fat Steven here with us. You can find him under JFG. Steven, welcome back to the channel. Oh, thanks for having me. Hope you're having a good day. Absolutely. Better that you're here. And folks, don't forget, if you're uh, enjoying some of those thumbnails that you see, both on this channel and on Valiant Renegade, those are all done by Steven, a tremendous artist. And by the way, Steven, I would say, and I know you're too humble to admit it, but I believe you truly are the greatest thumbnail artist on YouTube, and I mean it. Folks, you can be the best YouTube viewer, and I mean it, just by clicking the like button. Let's dive into today's content. It's out of Variety. It's by Zach Scharf. Here's what it says, folks. Ryan Reynolds is surprised. Disney allowed Deadpool and Wolverine to be so hard R. It's a huge step for them, and I'm not trying to sound condescending. Well, let's find out what this means. Ryan Reynolds said in a new video interview with Fandango that he is surprised Disney allowed the upcoming Deadpool and Wolverine to be so R-rated. The movie is the first Deadpool film to be released under Disney following the company's acquisition of Fox, which made Reynolds' first two R-rated Deadpool movies that grossed just over $780 million each at the worldwide box office. Comic book fans feared Disney might tamp down the franchise's R rating given its commitment to family entertainment. Oh, folks. Don't worry, we're so long past that, you don't even have to worry for a moment. Not for a moment, I tell you. But Reynolds and director Sean Levy were granted permission to continue with the raunchy humor. I hope it doesn't sound condescending. This is Ryan Reynolds. I'm really proud for them for doing this. I think it's a huge step for them. I mean, it, has, it adds a whole other color to this kaleidoscope wheel that is that company and the different people that they have been entertaining forever. Now, Stephen... I don't have any problem in the world with hard R movies. I have enjoyed some of those hard R movies. I get the raunchy humor aspect of stuff. I don't remember what Tropic Thunder was was uh, rated. I bet it was rated R. I think it's maybe one of the greatest comedies of all time. I've got no problem. The, the issue I see here is that Disney needs a box office win. They just released another flop, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Not, not a terrible flop. I mean, it's not, it's not the Marvels. It's not Wish, but it's not going to make money. And they need to make a lot of money. They need to make a lot of money fast. They've got investors to please. And Deadpool and Wolverine, with a very hard R, right, if this is going to push boundaries, um, that limits the scope of the audience. And so, Stephen, you tell me what you think about this, because in the past, I've told listeners, viewers, I've told panelists that I think what Disney should have done is release this same movie in two different versions the hard R version and the PG-13 version. And the reason I would have done that is because they need to reach out to the biggest audience possible. And so they could have gotten the 13, 14, 15 year olds with the PG-13 version. And then one day on Disney plus, you know, years from now, they could have watched the hard R and ha had appreciation for that. But I think if they had released two theaters at the exact same time, both versions, you know, one a little bit more censored, one completely out there, I think that would have been a winning strategy to make a lot more money than they're going to make with a movie that's going to be extremely explicit. What, what do you think about that, Stephen? Do you, do you agree or disagree? I agree. It maximizes both audiences, both under the age of R and the ones that enjoy the R. Plain and simple. What do you make of the folks out there, Stephen, who would say, though, that uh, that's, a, that's a tool of censorship, that we would be stifling the creativity of Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman? What do you think about it? How, how is it censorship when you're getting two versions and the original version's still there? It's a great point. Stephen, the other thing that I'm looking at here is, you know, hard R films, very few have ever even come close to a billion. Even the Deadpool movies have struggled to get, you know, a huge, uh, what would you say, box office haul. I'm not trying to be negative about them. Uh, I see the value in the Deadpool movies. What 
What I also see, though, is that shareholders want value and they need value immediately because Disney has abdicated the box office largely. So, Stephen, if you had to make a guess, what do you what do you think the high is on the box office for this? Let's say it's let's say it's an awesome comedy. Let's say the reviews are stellar. Let's say audiences love it. What do you think the cap is on a hard R comedy these days? Well, I think Deadpool kind of sets the bar, so I would say that it would probably reach the same amount or a little bit under, depending on if the audience still wants to give time to Disney in general. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. And you might look at, uh, you know, I, I guess what I would say, Stephen, is seven hundred million is what I'm looking at. That, yeah, that's okay. about now six ninety. Let's well, it, it, it well played. It could hit. It could hit Joker levels, and maybe this will be a cultural zeitgeist. But again, that's. That's difficult. Now, one thing that's not difficult, however, is that, and, and Stephen, I'm looking forward to your opinion on this. This might, just might, create a tremendous pining, a desire in audiences to get more of Hugh Jackman as classical Wolverine. Uh -huh. Do you think that we're going to see Hugh Jackman return after this movie, or is this a one-off? Um. I will say a one-off right now, unless there's more dump trucks of money coming to his house. And <laughs> there's I think That's there's dump trucks ready to go if he'll if he'll play Wolverine for another decade, and they can de-age him. Uh, I don't I don't think there's any end to how much they would love to have him paired with Tom Holland as Spider Man. I'll just tell you. But here's why, folks. I think Stephen should maybe be a little oh, wary of the idea. Maybe they should think. Mm, Maybe this isn't going to happen because it seems like expectations are being set that this is not going to lead to any big surprises or changes in the MCU. This is out of Culture Crave over on X. It says Ryan Reynolds releases a disclaimer for Deadpool and Wolverine. Here's what Ryan Reynolds said. We're very excited to be joining you July 26th, but we should set the table correctly. This film is as paper thin as a sequel to Battlefield Earth. We're mostly going to beat each other senseless. Make enemies with Disney. Tell a few wiener jokes. Sorry, folks. Apologies. Make a few jokes at my expense. Make a lot of jokes at Hugh's expense. And completely sidestep Marvel's mandated after credit sequence. Which, if you haven't figured it out yet, is always just a commercial for another movie, which will invariably end with a commercial for another movie. So sit back, relax, let us lower your IQ, and raise your heart rate while we travel to a vapid dreamland. A place where grown men and grown women walk around in tights, and act like it's not a giant cultural cry for help. This is cinema. Now, that's funny, Stephen. It's, uh, there's no doubt it's funny. But uh, at the same time, it does seem to be setting the expectations. And so when you're doing funny, if you're going to say something important inside the joke, you put it at the beginning. And so it goes on and on, but I think that's kind of to hide that they really did want to release this we're very excited to be joining you July 26th, but we should set the table correctly. This film is as paper thin as a sequel to Battlefield Earth. And then when it talks about there not being anything at the end of the movie, no after credit scenes, nothing like that, I kind of, I kind of wonder if what they're doing here is reminding folks, this is a joke. It's not connected to anything. Don't expect to see Ryan or Hugh back. None of that is on track. What, what do you think, Stephen? Or, is, or am I making way too much out of a very funny release uh you could be this can also be bait and switch it could also be that we finally finally got what you guys have been screaming about is deadpool versus wolverine and this is going to be a one-off and it, it can be taken as an interpretation that's the best way i can look at it yeah absolutely steven if we do any more of uh any more deadpool movies you got a favorite uh, superhero got a favorite x-men you'd like to see brought in with brian reynolds I wouldn't want to see um, an X Men. I would like to see Hulk and just watch uh, Deadpool <laughs> beat the crap out of uh, Bruce Banner. No, 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 no. I'd be the opposite. You know, it'd be the opposite. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. No, I want. I want to see Bruce Banner's actor and Deadpool go at it and just have 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 Soy Hulk just stand there going confused. That's what I want. That's you know, I mean. you know. Actually, Stephen, now I can see it. Yeah. It's she Hulk with a giant ruse the entire time. Mm -hmm. She-Hulk was so terrible because actually she's a Deadpool character. She's going to be in the next Deadpool, and uh, we're just going to mock She-Hulk all day long. We can get the Eternals into it as well. I I'll go see that Deadpool. If Deadpool 4 is there to mock Phase 4 and Phase 5 of the MCU, if we just sit there and laugh at the Eternals 
at She-Hulk, at the Marvels, at, you know, you, you name it, uh, Secret Wars. I will have a great time with that. I would have a great, great time with it. I would like to see that the actual man behind Kang is Deadpool. That's what I would like to see. <laughs> Absolutely. Folks, would you go see that? Would you go see a movie where Deadpool just rips what we've been watching in uh, Marvel? You know what? He can rip, he can rip uh, Kurtzman's Star Trek, too. Now, that would be edgy. That would be exciting. That's the kind of stuff that would drive folks to cinemas because, secretly, we all sort of agree at this point because we're all voting the same way with our wallets. We're all calling it to Disney that, hey, eh, this stuff sucks. So, who knows? Maybe they'll make fun of it one day. Not today, though. Now we're going to get wiener jokes. Wiener jokes. Nothing wrong with a good wiener joke, I suppose, but it's not quite on par, I think, with what they could do, which is mock the misery that fans have been in trying to uh, trudge through the latest Marvel. Stephen, one thing that does not require any trudging is if folks want to stop by your channel and check out the great content you have coming their way. Tell the folks out there what you have, not only here, but somewhere else as well. Well, I'm on a platform that should not be named. that begins with an R. You can find me there. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. It rhymes with humble, folks. folks. Yeah, it does. Or, yeah, it does. I'm... No, you messed me up now. Yeah, you can find me online. Just <laughs> hope y'all my Twitter link will be in the description. All links are out there. Uh, thanks for having me, pro. Absolutely, and thank you for all that you do, Stephen. Uh, you're an integral part to the team, and uh, we would not be, and folks should know this, we would not be anywhere close to where we are if it were not for your artistic abilities. It's uh, It's been amazing watching you flourish and do the amazing things that you do often behind the scenes, folks, but never forget, Stephen is a major part of everything we do. Folks, you're also a major part of everything we do. Click the like button, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. Drop a comment down below. Let us know what would you want to see out of a future Deadpool 4, and do you want more Hugh Jackman? Would you take a de-aged Wolverine if it means throwing him on the scene with Spider-Man? And folks, also it is time for a celebration. Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern, we are celebrating 70,000 subscribers in only 17 months here on the channel. The march to 100K is on the way. So be there, folks. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a lot of fun, and we're going to celebrate you. Yes, you. All right, folks, that's it for this morning, but we have more content on the way. Later today, we'll be talking about The Simpsons, specifically one of their legacy, legendary, from the beginning actors is now calling the show out saying it's wit woke it's now a joke they're not making jokes they are the butt of the joke as audiences turn away from the simpsons very very sad to see the corpse of something that was once so great we'll talk about it we'll explain it it we'll tell you how disney is connected this afternoon folks wherever you are and whatever you're doing keep learning keep growing and as always keep having fun <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <sighs> I, I just, uh, I put out a tweet of a fat minority with a booger in her nose and I said, This is an empowered woman. <laughs> and Kataka retweeted it. <laughs> uh, you don't have your own X account, do you? Oh, well, I actually created it a while ago the greatest troll I've pulled off in a long time. Do you know how many things uh, I've secretly tanked? Oh gosh, I hope not. That would make me legally culpable. But, uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sweet baby ink. <laughs> huh? Yep. I'm the... <laughs> Shut up. I'm the CEO. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, look, this is my profile picture. <laughs> Everyone's just AI. It's great. I'm so excited to gaslight everyone and see what they're going to like next because they think it's socially obligated. <laughs> Wait. So you're... No way. You're yep. the CEO of Sweet Baby Inc. Maybe. But first, you should see the jewelry company I created. <laughs> We're going to get sued. <laughs> it's a no, yeah, it's going to be good. <laughs>